Alrighty, we're simplifying this crazy looking expression here using the log laws. Well, let's start with a couple of things. First one, I see division inside of this logarithm. Single logarithm with division. I can pull it apart and write it as two separate logarithms with subtraction. That looks like that. Uh, one of the things I handled right here that we haven't talked about, but reach back into your algebra two brains here. Um, if you take the square root of something, that's exactly the same as raising it to the one-half power. So I did that as well. So now I pulled them apart using subtraction. I have my x squared. The numerator went to the left. The denominator went to the right. Now I have this. But we're not done because we are also armed with the exponent property of logarithms, which says if I have an exponent inside of a logarithm, exponent inside of a logarithm, I can move it out front with multiplication. So we've successfully expanded this thing out using the log laws. Okay, let's look at the other one. The other one was this guy. Hmm, okay, so I have log base 3 of x squared plus 4x plus 4. I cannot pull these apart because there's addition inside of a logarithm. There is no backwards version of this thing that says if there's addition inside the logarithm, I can pull it apart with multiplication. That's that's no law. That's nothing we've done. But what I can do, just by looking at this, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck, I can factor this. It looks like all those other things we factor a million times. So we want two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 4. Well, they're both 2, x plus 2 and x plus 2, which happens to be x plus 2 squared. Now we can say, well, I see an exponent inside of a logarithm, that 2. So I can multiply that out front, and I'm left with 2 log base 3 of x plus 2. We are expanding these things out using the rules to pull apart these things as much as possible. Moving on.